Hello and welcome to another video or the first video that you've seen from my channel. My name is Nicolas. I'm an email marketer for fashion brands. If you've seen already other videos from my channel, you'll see that, you know, the style is pretty different because we are doing a bit of redesigning uh, for seven to one, which are pretty excited about. So yeah, uh, tune in for next week. I'm going to launch a new website, new plans as well for email marketing. So a lot of good stuff. So if you've clicked on the video, you want to know why being a niche brand is important. And in this video, we're going to talk speci specifically for um, this Sunday edition of Learnings From about a UK brand called Box Row. We're going to talk about what is being a niche, um, what are the pros, what are the cons of being in a niche, and um, how did Box Row really grow and became successful by sticking to a niche and really owning the niche space they're in. And uh, yeah, and we're going to discuss why I think it's a good move if you're starting a fashion brand or you're in a, you know, kind of re-strategizing your marketing. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. So what do you mean by a niche? You know, what, what is a niche? Um, and by the way, it's called niche because it's French um, and I'm French. So, yeah, anyway, um, so what do I mean by a niche? So a niche is when you narrow down to a specific market, and there are different ways to approach a certain market. So the main three ways are you narrow down to a specific audience, meaning that you want to target men between 50 and 60, for example. You narrow down to a specific kind of product. So you want to do like hiking shoes, for example, and that's it, that, that's your core product. And you want to narrow down to activity, um, like swimming. So you want to do swimwear only. You want to do um, uh, apparel for cycling. You want to do apparel for any kind of situations. But really it's to narrow down the target market as specific as possible. Um, so is it a really good idea to niche down actually? So here are some pros of being in a niche. The first pro is it's easier to find your audience because you are in a very specific market, you target very specific audiences. So it's easier to find them because you know what they like, you know in the groups they're in, uh, you can find Facebook ads group or Facebook groups. You can find hashtags to target, etc. So it's very easy to find the audience. It's also easier to create products that adapt to the audience because, you know, you are creating something specifically for them. Um, so let's say that you, you, you are creating a line for cyclists. Well, it's, you know, what cyclists need uh, in terms of apparel for cycling and performance. So it's easier to understand what, what product you can create. It's easier to communicate as well because you know the problems they have, you know what issues they might want to solve in terms of comfort, material, durability, etc. So it's easier to communicate the pain points and also the, the benefits of your product. Um, you build a great expertise once you're in a niche because people refer to you as the guy from that niche. Um, so it's also very interesting and very helpful in the long run to build that expertise for your niche because once people want like a hiking shoe and you're established as a hiking shoe brand, then people might more likely come to you rather than going to a more generalist uh, brand. And it's also harder to replace. So if you are in within a niche and you answer a specific uh, solution and pain points, it's harder for people to find a replacement uh, with another brand or another product, right? Because you're, you've been their go-to within that space. So it's harder for them to, to find a better solution. What are the cons of being in a niche? So it's more expensive to target because um, especially if you do like ads, um, the way you will target them is by a greater segmentation. So it might be expensive to target because it goes to a smaller group of people. And the smaller group of people is the, 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 the higher the cost per impression is. 
it requires a more premium positioning as well because if you want to be like specialized in within a certain niche you might need a more premium positioning because you want to be like the go-to guys within that specific niche you have a smaller margin for error because um, you might release very specific products so less products so like the i would say the, the phishing tools you have um, is more limited so let's say that instead of you know releasing a 40 items collection being like a generic brand you release only 10 and um, if half of them don't really sell a lot you have a big you know problem on your hands so the the, mar the margin of error is, is quite small uh, you need an absolute knowledge as well of the space if you position yourself as a boxing apparel brand as a cycling brand as a fishing apparel brand you need to know exactly what's going on in terms of events um, new things coming out new brands appearing so you need an absolute knowledge of your niche and also it's a limited market so depending on your niche the market might be you know a limit of 1 million 5 million a year 20 million a year 100 million a year whatever but it's not like illimited it's not like walmart you know what i mean so you need to be you know con consider this as well like if you go to a certain market if it's very very niche um let's say like shoe for uh ballerinas this is very niche so you can't really expect you know turnover of 50 100 200 million a year maybe so you need to take all these um things into consideration these are cons i still think that the pros are much greater than the cons but you know you still need to to take a, to think about it so let's learn from box row um so box row is a brand that i really like um i talked to one of the founders actually um some uh, months ago really cool guys they're based in the UK, so a bit of um, a background from, from them. So they're based in the UK. Um, they're one of, of the leading boxing apparel brands uh, in, the, in Europe, at least, uh, potentially in the world. They went from one specific product to a global brand, like they have big market now. They are uh, a huge audience. And they receive more than 500,000 visits a month. I think it's much greater than that. I took this from various websites, like analytics websites. But I think it's much greater than that. They have like 500K followers on Instagram and so on. So they are very big, but they came from a very specific uh, market. So it all started with this. So their uh, main product when they began was a boxing sauna suit. So boxing and boxers in general need to lose weight before fights. They usually uh, need a sauna suit or any kind of solution to sweat a lot. They launched this and they became like the top sellers. Uh, they sold a lot of it on Amazon because people were looking specifically for, for, for a boxing sauna suit and they positioned themselves really great. And so they, they came out with this, became a top seller. And it gave them a revenue to grow because the sauna suit had a quite uh, high price point, good margin on it. So it gave them the margin and the cash to invest for growth. And now it's more like this. So now Box Row does a lot of different things. Um, they were focusing more on apparel lately, but they released like uh, the boxing ring, the boxing bags. They did a collaboration with Creed, so they were um, on Creed 3, the movie. They are soon releasing some boxing gloves, which apparently are very, very good. They've been working on it for the past three years, I think. So it's going to be pretty, pretty interesting. But yeah, so it's all started with one product and now they're like one global brand, but still fo focusing on boxing. So their niche is boxing apparel and now boxing equipment. So they come from one specific product to a whole range still within the same niche boxing and so content for them is also key um let me check this yeah, so content is also key um they do a lot of content around boxing still helping the boxers prepare for a fight 
give them inf information about upcoming fights, past fights, etc. So they understand what their audience wants to hear about. They focus on boxing, so they know what to feed their audience in terms of newsletters, social media posts, videos, and they provide value. You know, they don't only send communications about, hey, I've just launched this new t-shirt. They really create great content around a niche. And that's what it's exciting when you work with a niche is you know what you want to talk about because you know what your target market likes uh, rather than just being a shoe brand and you don't really know if people like to travel, if they want to like, if they like art, if they prefer movies, if, if they prefer anything. So it's really easier to, you know, pinpoint what you want to talk about and communicate, as we said in the beginning. So newsletters, they do a lot of great newsletters, like always talking about, you know, boxing world, news. Um, they do great tips as well about, you know, how to wrap your hand when boxing, um, how to prepare for a fight, great workouts um, tips as well. Social media as well, like they do a great social media things on uh, their Instagram, their TikTok, their YouTube. So YouTube is more about the storytelling and some how to's um, and uh, yeah, and social media, you know, it's more like a blog and a lifestyle thing that really like pushing products out. So every single product they make is made with their audience in mind, with the objective of getting closer to being the niche leader. So that's also the point of, you know what your audience wants, you're within the niche, you know what they like, you know what they need. So everything you create basically is to answer that specific niche, right? And the objective is to get closer to being the niche leader. And when people think about boxing apparel, they might want to think about box row, you know? So again, like very good example. It's all about boxing, everything they do, their apparel, they have like skipping ropes, as we saw as well. They have like boxing rings and stuff. So everything they do is focused on the boxer. Now, you might, fo focusing on a niche, you might say, well, I only focus on boxers, but maybe like, because the apparel looks cool, you might, um, you know, attract more people as well. So you have one small, more initial group, and then you might target and attract more people to it because the product is good, the, the, the product looks cool. So you might, you know, target people going to the gym or going for a run, things like that, uh, rather than just boxers only. Uh, to a certain extent. So focusing on one target and creating product for it also helps with one crucial element in e-commerce, and that is customer repetition, right? So once you know what products they like, what products they need, what they are passionate about, you know, what do they like in their life and what do they need, it's easier to create products that they also are likely to buy. So again, if we take the example of Boxro, um, we know that their main target is, bo is boxers. They started with a sauna suit. They went into apparel. They made like uh, skipping ropes, uh, hand wraps. Now they do the, the rings and the in the bags. So everything is like one buyer persona, and you try to equip that buyer persona with as many product as possible to really like have like the entire. Uh, suit of it, you know? So yeah, um, that's why it's important as well to be in a niche because it's easier to create products that are easily bought by the same person. So how can you do it for your brand? So you need to find one specific niche first. Um, my biggest recommendation for it is don't go for the fancy stuff, go for what you like and what you know about. Um, you know, it's like, what are you passionate about? If, if you had one brand to buy from, what would it be? How would it look like? And create that brand for you first, because you are the first customer for your niche. Like if you're, if you have no interest in uh, boxing, don't create a boxing apparel brand because you won't really manage it well. You won't really know what people look for and you're going to get bored as well. So really find something that you like about uh, a niche that you you know about and focus on that. Create one product for that niche. You know, don't really try to be super big at the beginning. 
really try to understand, go really like organic with it, um, you know, find Facebook groups and uh, Reddits and things like that to really communicate with your niche audience and understand like, what do they want? You know, why would they need, would they like my product? Share some initial design. Become a content powerhouse about the subject as well. Like we saw with Box Row. They talk a lot about boxing, not only their product. So you really need to also as well to, you know, embrace the content of it and really be like a, a communication tool for it. Expand your catalog as well. Once you have a specific product, once you get your sale, you need to think about what can I create to make people repeat, uh, attract new, more customers within the niche. And it's important as well to be patient, collect feedback regularly, stay in your niche. Don't go diverse. Like don't start like a, I don't know, a cycling apparel brand and then go on to a uh, strongest man, you know, be very specific to what you do. Find your lane, stay on it and, you know, and hang on because, you know, it's, you need to be patient. Like, you know, being in a niche, obviously you can't really go super broad on Facebook ads. You can't really grow, grow, go super broad on YouTube ads. It's more organic. It takes more time to find the right people to buy. So be patient, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy, but on the long term, I think being a niche is greater than any generic brand there is because it's much easier. Um, so yeah, um, it is better to be known within a small ecosystem than to be unknown in a big one, you know? So again, box row, um, I don't really know how much they turn over every year. They obviously don't turn over the same as other apparel brands or, you know, uh, like Gymshark, for example, which is kind of a niche as well. But they have like a very strong foundation. They have a very strong core customer base that will be very loyal because for them, Box Row is the reference for boxing. So as long as these people keep practicing boxing, Box Row will be their, the place they go to, you know. So yeah, it's very important. And yeah, to, to kind of summarize this, um, for me, being in a niche is crucial for you. It is crucial to get more people to, to be loyal to your brand as well. Um, it is crucial to better communicate with your targets. Um, it's easier for everything you're going to do from product creation, product design, communication, newsletter strategy, um, customer repetition you need to find your niche and it might not be easy, but you need to, to try to find one. So on that last note, I hope that the video was useful. Um, if it was, please give a like to the video, subscribe to the channel for more, um, fashion brands, e-commerce tips, email marketing tips. So as I said, every Wednesday, there is like a video about email marketing, e-commerce tips for fashion brands. And every Sunday I'm, I'm going to do a, a video about learning from a, a great brand that I like. And if you have any questions, get in touch with me, 721.co, um, LinkedIn as well, in the comments. And yeah, um, hope you like the video and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.